Hey, this is Ada. This is Stefan. And welcome to Living Simply in Mexico. And what are we talking about today? Today's an interesting one. Thinking about retirement has hit us like a ton of bricks recently. Um, we're not there yet. We're still working hard up in the United States. But what we wanted to do today is go through um, generally what's in our heads about thinking about retirement in Mexico, what we know now since being down in Mexico since 2017 and share that with you. So Stefan, as you're unraveling the thread. <laughs> Actually, by the way, these shoes are the best for Mexico, these Merrells, um, but shoes take a pounding Mexico. But anyway, uh, what was your question? Yeah, you're, you're, he's being, uh, it's his second job, his second life as a cobbler. Yeah. Um, so unraveling yeah. the thread, how about uh, talk about unraveling our lives here? Yeah, um, so one thing um, that I really unexpected uh, for me to start thinking about is what I call unraveling your life. Someone told me once that, that uh, you know, as time changes, we all change, um, so nothing ever stays the same. And so that's one thing I had to think about. The things I used to do, the places I used to go, uh, you know, in, in my, even my current work life um, have changed over the years. But this is a really big change that you really have to be psychologically prepared for because you are gonna get new friends um, and your old friends will still be there, but you won't be seeing them every day. So unraveling your life, be prepared for it. Um, we haven't moved yet, but it's, it, it's, it's an emotional thought um, when you get there. Uh, and it's an emotional thought even now for us planning it. Well, look what we have here. Ada's gardening. Uh-huh. Ada. Yes. So why should people <laughs> consider retiring in Mexico? Um, if you like to garden. <laughs> <laughs> you like to garden? <clears throat> I hate gardening. Ah. Okay. Uh, I don't like I don't like bugs. I don't like gardening. What do we have in Mexico? <laughs> bugs <laughs> and gardening. Uh, no. Um, yeah. Um, you know what? Why should people retire to Mexico? You know, there's something to be said about fresh air, sunshine, and well, I don't like to garden. It's not because I don't like to be physical. I think it's actually a fantastic way to stay young, um, to kind of be in touch with nature and earth and getting up and down and mm -hmm. you know moving and not being stuck in front of a screen although i am listening to my music yeah. um you know and it's 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 just for me movement is um is important in multiple sort of multiple realms whether it's actual physical movement whether it's movement of just your brain and being in a place where you're challenged um, you know, linguistically, um, although it's not too much of a challenge here, but if you want to be challenged linguistically, it's here. Um, you know, you want to be challenged culturally, it's here. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to find a, 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 you know, a community, um, you'll find your tribe, it's, it's here. What you're saying is something very different than what a lot of people think and why a lot of people retire. Because a lot of people retire in Mexico because it's, they, they, they perceive it's cheaper, right? Uh, and I think that's changed, especially over the last um, year or two, just because of the exchange rate for one. And, and, and also, too, I think because of the demand, you know, it's, right. it's, it is more expensive to live here. But it, it, it's, it's more expensive to live in Puerto Vallarta than it is to live in parts of the United States. Yeah. Um, so we're not. Yeah, we're sort of desire to this being our final our final stop, I guess. Um, which is still a process. We're not, we're not, you know, we're not anywhere near that, but mm -hmm. it's, um, it's why wait till you're dead to finally do what you want to do between medical science, between education and understanding what it takes to have a healthy lifestyle. Um, I'm planning on taking advantage of all of those things. So, um, now granted you could still get hit by a car coming around right, the corner, right. you know, and all of that, but you know, going up and down stairs on a daily basis mm -hmm. all right as a physical therapist the number one reason people end up in a nursing home is because they can't get off the toilet so if you are continually going up and down stairs um, and you're not just sitting um, you know on a flat nice surface and you know whatever mm -hmm. you're gonna be using all the things that are gonna help you in the long term what I see is there's a different cultural dynamic is coming down here you should start to learn the language see a different culture and I think a lot of folks from the United States and Canada have no idea the vastness and the richness that Mexico has to offer. So it's a whole nother world that's very close 
um, to where you were from in, you know, if you're from the US or Canada, um, that you can see and experience and provide a whole new, uh, uh, you know, experience for your mind and kind of build those neural pathways, you know, as you grow older and try to, to you know, establish yourself in a very different environment. So I find Look that really cool. with the neuroscience Yeah, talk. Wow. exactly. I I'm hang around you too much. Very proud of you. <laughs> All right, the next thing I would say, I think number three on our list is personal items and getting rid of things. Speaking of that, we're doing the trash right now. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to set someone straight here, though. <laughs> so, so we also have Marilyn with us. Uh -oh. Make an extra noise. <laughs> so, Ada, what, what's your thoughts on personal items and getting ready to... I love return. getting rid of stuff. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. Um, I thrive on getting rid of stuff. Uh, I think you have more of an issue getting rid of stuff than I do. However, I do have a weak, I do have a weak spot. What's that? Anything that has to do with fitness equipment. Fitness equipment, yes. Well, you know, it's, it's a big thing because we're not talking about getting rid of little things. Uh, you got a motorcycle coming here. We're talking like big things like cars and we have an old boat and trying to sell an old boat. Uh, and then there's all the sentimental items. Those are the tough ones. You know, like I have a bicycle that I've had since college, which I have no should... problem getting rid of my bicycle. Yes. But I want to use my bicycle, so yes. I'm not getting rid of that. But stuff like that that I think is 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 worth thinking. Then there, then there's the mementos. Like you know, like my parents had China and silverware. It's like, oh, this is ours to pass down through the generations. And so, you know, what do you do with stuff like that? This and is why I am so happy we don't do gifts. Getting rid of all those items, uh, not only mentally to get rid of them. Here comes a car driving like a mad dog. Um, not only getting rid of those from a mental perspective, but literally selling things and that. That takes a lot of time. And so uh, if you're thinking about retiring at some point and you have things you haven't used in a while that are just, oops, sorry, <laughs> laying around. I just hit Ada with a bag. Didn't mean to do that, Ada. Anyway, um, if, if, if you think about that, uh, you have stuff laying around that you're not using now, but say you want to want to do something in five years, start getting rid of that stuff now. Extremely important. And also think of it this way, too, is if you have children and you're looking to, to give something hand down to generations, really take an honest assessment if they really want to have your stuff, right? Um, I told Annika she can throw anything away she wants. Yes, yeah, so our daughter. And so um, anyway, that is the plan. So you got to start getting in. And, and so if you are, when you do retire and you have very little things that you have to move, that's the best place to be. If you really have to put stuff in storage, think about why you're putting it in storage as we go across this bridge here. Think about why you're really putting it in storage or if you'll ever use it again. Because you don't want to be one of those people that stores everything, that has all these mementos. And then then basically, uh, when you pass away at some point, people have to go through that stuff. And here you are, I've been paying for a storage locker for all that time. So anyway, uh, getting rid of things uh, and trying to live a simpler life is, uh, is important uh, for the process. And it's not easy to do. One more final note on that. If you do have some items that you'd like to keep and bring down with you to Mexico, if you're living in a tropical environment like we are here in Puerto Vallarta, uh, a lot of those things are going to rust, are going to decay, are going to fall prey to termites, things of that nature. So think really about that too um, before you try to uh, bring down the family jewels and the old furniture and things like that that uh, termites would absolutely, absolutely love. <laughs> All right, so we're in the market on Izaquale. Yeah, so uh, I guess given we're in the market, uh, or you got a bargain and buy stuff. Buy stuff. Uh, it's a good time to talk about finances. Finances, yes. And so that's an interesting one because you know on the boards you always see things about, um, hey, how much do I need in order to live in Mexico? Things of that nature. My my take there's there's two items that come out to mind. I'd love to get your thoughts too. One is, um, you know, they, they give a set amount. Usually the amount of money you need to get a permanent residency or a our temporary residency uh, is enough that you could live on. So you have to prove your finances there. So that's your first uh, step. And there's plenty of videos out there for that. The second is, is if you're cutting it that close, you have to worry about things like uh, exchange, rate. exchange rates and inflation. And I think a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people um, have found over time 
that those things, especially this last year, has been really rough on people because, you know, the exchange rate was up to $20 uh, or 20 pesos a dollar, 21 pesos a dollar. It was actually at like 25. Yeah, one there, brief no, spike, yeah. And, and now it's like 16 and a half. Uh, and then there's also inflation in Mexico as well. So what, what that does is if you're on a uh, shoestring budget, that makes it really difficult um, to, uh, to survive. And so if you're that close, um, Honestly, I don't know if, you know, you, you can make it, but it's difficult. And the other thing to consider is, you know, there's not a lot of, like, this is where it, it makes a difference whether you're in a, a, a condo or a house. Um, because, you know, if you're in a condo, I mean, both you're going to have costs that are recurring. Yeah, and that's but, another item on their list, actually. Yeah, um, <laughs> but, you know, the, the, the whole idea of, like, yeah, what are those recurring costs? And that can be everything from... You know, from insurance to uh, to HOA. Yeah. So uh, now we're in a bit of a quiet spot. Um, so other things that are related to finances, uh, if you're cutting it really close, uh, you know, there's other things to consider, like healthcare. So healthcare is pretty cheap here. You can pay cash in a lot of places, but if you don't have that buffer, it can be it can be quite difficult uh, for, to pay cash. But you can live pretty cheaply here. The other aspect of it, and I think this is the really important piece that I forgot to mention earlier is that it's your lifestyle so if you if you don't have a lot of money you can get by here there's a lot of people get that get by here the very little in mexico but your your options are limited you're living you know maybe you're living in a studio place maybe you don't maybe you have a dirt floor right you can go to that level of detail and live here perfectly fine but obviously the more money you have the more comfortable you'll be living any, yeah, any comments I, on that? yeah i don't think it's necessarily that you're limited because there's a lot um that is available it's just what is your standard of living that yes. you want to have and what are the things that are important to you that are valuable to you that you want. <clears throat> Having a place to store my stuff is not valuable to me. Right. So I don't necessarily need a place to store my stuff, but it may be valuable to you. You might have some really, um, you know, you, you want to have those nice things and all that. So it's just, it just depends. If you want to live like an American or a Canadian, like you're living at home and then <laughs> coming here and trying to live in that same manner, that is going to be expensive, mm -hmm. right? So you can live more like a local Mexican and live relatively cheaply, but you have to understand you have to live like that and not like you did, you know, say in your your apartment or your house up north. That is crazy, man. Holy mackerel. Oh. That is a long ways up there. <sighs> Look here on the Isla. This is pretty exciting news, actually. A little bit of buzz in the neighborhood. The bistro is coming soon. Okay, the other topic du jour is renting versus buying a home, right? And so obviously we, uh, we went uh, and bought uh, a home as a starter home for us. And then we liked it so much, we, we got a forever home. Uh, and we went that route uh, because we actually love doing um, doing the the build out of the houses and everything. And it's cheaper if you get a fixer upper or if you get a house versus a condo. Uh, that's what we found. Um, and we've really enjoyed it here. We made the right decision after a lot of thought prior, although our purchase was really quick. Renting, I think, is another great option, especially if you're not sure exactly where you're going to be longer term. That's a good way to yeah. figure out if you like the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, and you know, here's the thing with neighborhoods, and we, we just experienced this as well, kind of looking to see the difference yeah. between, um, you can be in the same neighborhood and there's such a different vibe. Yes. Inside different houses. So we literally, uh, I probably saw two or three houses on my street of some of our neighbors this week that I actually hadn't been in before. and. It was really, really interesting because it's like completely different feel, a completely different noise, uh, different views, and so, and you know, and different pluses and minuses. So, um, so that's the thing. You know, you might like a, a neighborhood, but note that it may be the neighborhood you're looking at, but also the type of house and what you want. Right. Do you want a house with a view, or do you want a house that's in a certain neighborhood? Do you want a house that feels like it's in the thick of things? or do you wanna be out a little bit where it's quiet? So all really important things to consider because those are gonna make the difference between you being um, really happy and wanting to move. And your impression of a location like Puerto Vallarta or whatever city in Mexico 
will change just by what block you visit and what house you visit. Uh, and so that's really important. So we actually really love the area of, of uh, here, Gulch. Gringo Gulch and the El Cerro Hill. Um, that's where, where we pretty much are at most of the time and, and where we reside. The other item is if you're looking to have a rental and do that longer term, uh, there's a couple things. One is that uh, those rental prices can go up. And again, if they're in pesos, especially, you know, your inflation um, uh, in your exchange rate may be a big difference. It is doing laundry in here. Hey, Dad, what you doing? Laundry. So another topic we're thinking, family. How does that impact as a consideration for retiring in Mexico? Mm -hmm. Well, depends on how much your family <clears throat> wants your help, uh, needs your help, and um, and then also just your you know how much you need them in terms of your them being in your lives. Just being down here, you may have this may be a destination mm -hmm. for you to have. <laughs> It's funny how sometimes friends and family, you take for granted how close they are to you and you don't visit them and you don't call them as much. And then you move away to someplace kind of cool and suddenly you're seeing them more often. Right. Um, or you're finding a place to kind of meet halfway and then everybody gets a new experience. So I have the feeling that's gonna be, um, at least for us, maybe something that we might look at. But I think that's definitely something to consider. Yeah, I think uh, one thing to Ada's point about um, having family is we're Gen X part of the, the sort of the sandwich generation. And, you know, we've got a daughter that's going to college and a, uh, uh, a parents or some parents, my mom passed away that are, you know, may need us in the future. Um, so that's a consideration, but um, all of them are extremely fiercely independent. So um, that makes a, a difference as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of obligations as we grow older that we have. And that's definitely a consideration um, when thinking about moving and retiring in Mexico. Next major consideration is taxes. I'm not quite sure on Canada, but for a U.S. citizen, regardless of where you live in the world, you are going to pay taxes in the United States. And depending on what state you're from, you may have to also pay those state taxes uh, as well. Uh, one thing that you, you can do if you are expat full time is there is a, a foreign income exclusion um, that is quite substantial that you could take advantage of. We are not tax experts, by the way, and this is just, you know, our knowledge as we know it. If you have some additional knowledge, please comment and uh, correct or add to what we have to say. Um, <clears throat> but the, the other item is that uh, a lot of folks, since all their income is in the United States, they're being taxed in the United States. Uh, they want to have a, 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 a residence in the United States for, for tax purposes. Um, they will most likely choose a state that uh, is a, a non-tax state. So there's seven states that do not have state sales tax. And I think it's almost like a, a you know, kind of an understated thing or a thing that don't, not a whole lot of people talk about. But like South Dakota, I think you can get residency there very quickly and become a resident there. So, um, you know, we're not recommending that, you know, uh, but but that's what people do. Uh, and so, you know, there's a lot of things to consider for taxes. You just can't forget about your U.S. taxes when you come to Mexico. And if you make money in Mexico, obviously you have to pay taxes in Mexico as well. So that can get very, very complicated. Um, but if you have, if you're on, if you're retired, if your income is generated in the United States, um, then primarily it's the United States that you have to worry about uh, in, in relating to, to paying your taxes. So some things on taxes as the shade and stuff comes into this video. <laughs> All right, I've got the relaxed data. So question for you, Ada. Yes. Uh, your health in moving to Mexico, retiring in Mexico. Do you need to be healthy? You know, do you have to be fit? Uh, healthcare just how, how does that all come together and I, I guess let's let's first talk about your your health and wellness and we'll talk about health care as the next item well I think it's it's you can be healthy anywhere you live and you can be unhealthy anywhere you live um, I think you know you there's definitely things to consider with regards to um, you know their safety um, you know, and, and when we're looking at, depending on how old you are, 
the older you are, fall risk is an issue. Um, and having decreased mobility is an issue. So that is going to come back to your health. Now, so do, do you need to be in shape to come into Mexico? Well, it depends. Um, if you're going to be, you know, living on a hill, uh, you need kind of some level of fitness to be able to do that and, and, and some level of balance. However, considering when you decide to do your move and when you are, um, and kind of what that sort of process looks like, you should get healthier as you live someplace where you are walking more, where you're outside, where you're getting fresh air, where you're getting vitamin D, where you're walking cobblestone streets and working on the balance. Um, that's all going to be great for your health. Um, in terms of food, there are lots of opportunities to eat really, really delicious, healthy, fresh food. Um, and there are also lots of opportunities to eat not so healthy and fresh foods. So you're going to have to make those decisions and those choices based on, you know, kind of what you're wanting to, um, you know, what's right for you. Um, and then with regards to health care, medical care, um, you know, there are, there may be some drugs that you may not be able to get here, um, you know, and that may depend on if you're, you know, maybe you're, maybe you do have a, maybe you do have cancer, maybe you have something that is a more significant um, you know, medical issue, depending on where you're at, are you on a trial? Are you, um, on, you know, are you, are you on some drug that is not yet generic? Um, so you can, you can get most things here and including cancer cares. You know, we have a friend that, um, has told us about some of his experiences and, um, you know, and, but it, it's, it's, those are going to be your decisions that you're going to have to make. Um, and I think, having some level of health insurance somewhere is going to be important. So once again, you'll have to figure out, do you get the insurance here? Do you get the insurance back home? Yeah, yeah, that, that's the next item that's on our list is actual health insurance. Uh, expat health insurance, like traveler's insurance versus Mexican health insurance versus paying cash versus keeping your, your insurance up in the States. That's right. a lot, lot there, right? Right, and then, and then other aspects of, of being healthy are, you know, who you may need to guide you in your health journey. Um, if you're back home and you're seeing, you know, you've, you've got a personal trainer or you've got a physical therapist or you have a psychologist, um, do you have those same resources here? Sure, you can, you can find them just like you would somewhere else. But um, once again, you know, they exist down here. You just have to, um, you know, seek them out. So, Everybody's going to have their own um, their own journey. So, um, but are there resources down here for all of those? Yes, um, you're going to have to figure out your comfort level based on you know your your personal situation. Now, you mentioned if you do go with the uh, the the private healthcare in Mexico, that it's best to get that earlier rather than later because a pre uh, pre existing pre existing condition. If you've right? got a pre existing condition. Um, you know, that can really kind of backfire on you if you're, if you're wanting to get, um, yeah, Mexican insurance for that matter, because in, in the United States, that's not an issue. Um, and so there are, um, and I don't know if we're on the health insurance talk right now, but there, yes, we are. <laughs> okay, so now we're on health insurance. So there may be some limitations. So in the United States, um, if you're living more than half the year in the United States, um, then your, uh, your United States health insurance cannot um, ding you for having a pre-existing condition. If you are living more than six months outside of the U.S. and you, um, you, know, you may want to take a look at, it, that may be where pre-existing conditions do make a difference. So just note that you, you've got to take a look at those, those laws. I'm not, I don't, I'm not an expert in insurance. And another topic is uh, a major item is purpose. You know, once you retire, you're truly retired uh, in Mexico. You're not, you know, running Airbnbs or trying to make a living online or, or whatnot. Uh, what are you going to do with yourself, right? You know, I, I we did a video uh, a while back about, you know, our plans, but really the idea is for you to, to take a look at that well before retirement. Um, are there areas you want to volunteer in? Um, do you have any hobbies? you plan to do a lot of traveling, uh, uh, you know, what, what's your plan to give back? I, I think that's a, a big 
picture of, uh, for a lot of folks that uh, do retire in Mexico is giving back. And so do take stock of that. Uh, I think it's a really important one um, because, you know, as you're on the rat race, a rat race as we are now, you don't really have time to think about that. And you just think about, you know, sitting around and, and having uh, some time to do all the things that you've always wanted to do. Um, but, you know, the reality is, is we'll run through this at some point. Uh, so anyway, that's it. Uh, find your purpose in life in retirement. We're gonna talk about a few more items. Uh, I guess the next one is assessing a desired location in Mexico because it's not all the same for all people, right? Mm, definitely not. Yes, and so we chose Puerto Vallarta. Uh, and if you go to a place like Puerto Vallarta, there's a lot to do, a lot within walking distance. Uh, and there's just a lot of activity all the time. You know, the downside is there's noise, there's lots of people, and uh, especially over the last couple of years, it's gotten a lot more expensive. Yeah, I mean, and for some people, some of those things may not be disadvantages. Those right. might be advantages. You might like it that there are, um, that there is noise and there's life and it's vibrant and um, and others may be seeking peace. So yeah. it, it, it really does depend. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you know, other areas to consider, or actually to think about is Puerto Vallarta in the summertime is extremely hot. And so a lot of folks like the more cooler mountain type climate. That's one thing to consider. Obviously, if you're looking to get integrated more into society uh, uh, here in Mexico, you know, maybe you go into an inland city um, where there's less tourists. Uh, and then, of course, areas that are less expensive, too. Uh, and so there, there's a lot to consider when looking at a location, as well as also to access to other parts of the world, like the United States or even further abroad. You know, maybe Mexico City is your speed, right? So there's all things to consider. So just wanted to, to point that out here. It's not all all the same for everybody. We really enjoy it here in Puerto Vallarta uh, and uh, we love it. Uh, we, we, I don't think we would choose another place. We have any, no second guesses, right? No. Yeah, not on our end. So anyway, that's location. There's a lot of legal things to cover here. I think one of the big areas is is uh, temporary residency, uh, permanent citizenship, those sorts of areas. That's the first one. Do uh, you have any comments on that, Ada? Yeah, I do. And then, and then other things in terms of legal are um, also just thinking about, uh, well, I know you have some couple other ideas, but also if you do decide to buy, um, you know, property Trust. or such, yeah, that's, that's going to, you will, you will enter the legal realm, um, but it's kind of part of the process. Yeah, let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's talk about that next. So uh, head into the, um, what, what are your thoughts on like permanent residency? A lot of people, a lot of people will come here in the past and they'll stay a tourist. And then every so many months, make a run for the border to re-up the tourist visa and go back and forth. Uh, Mexico is really, um, really clamping down on that. Uh, and so that, that's one area. Mm -hmm. And then most people come in as a, as a temporary resident, right? Yeah, and I know that there's been some, you know, it, it's not, you, you can read like in the, you know, online, you know, kind of what the requirements are. But uh, that's not an absolute uh, because we've mm -hmm. had friends who have, um, been kind of fast forwarded through the process and it may be because they actually um, own uh, substantial properties um, you know like they, they even though they were you know generally it's, it's usually I think a two year for the for the temporary and then you then you can get your permanent after that they actually were kind of um, fast-tracked a bit they had their temporary uh, but they were able to get the permanent quicker because they they own several properties and they're actively you know, working with those, and this is really their home base. So yeah. there, there's going to be some some wiggle room, and that's also true. Um, I mean, that was true on my side. I'm not going to go into detail on mine. You but, got a video on it, right? Yeah, yeah. there's actually a video um, on when I when I got my Mexican citizenship because I my mother my mother is from Mexico, and so um, I was able to do it that way. But there was even, like I said, not even absolutes there. So my experience was my experience, and I gave it as much as I could, but it's going to vary a bit. Um, I do know that some people, with regards to when they're going through that process, there are definitely resources like um, we have Nest, like Nestor. Nestor right. uh, we've actually featured on a couple of our videos that um, there are people that are here in Mexico or, you know, maybe back in the States, but here in Mexico that actually will facilitate the process for you here and go with you to the appointment, help to be, you know, just an interpreter. And also they've done it so many times, yeah. they'll really help you through the process. And, and that may be well worth it in terms of the headache of um, going, make an appointment 
and then realizing you're missing a document. Yeah. You know, that's having somebody that's there to help you and, and, and paying just a little extra on that may make that process a lot smoother. Yeah, and uh, we'll put Nestor's uh, Facebook um, link down below, but I, his last post this week, he was literally sitting in line before places opened early in the morning so he could get in and get people processed. Um, so that's that's one key thing. And the, the other thing about that too, obviously f your finances do matter. Um, obviously they don't want folks that are coming to Mexico that will need some sort of financial support once you get here. Uh, and so there are some barriers there that obviously there are many there are many videos on that to, to be aware of. The other item is, is of course trust uh, for property. So if you plan to own property, you know, there's a lot of myths out there. It's like, oh my gosh, you don't own your property and all this other stuff. Um, but you know, if you are a certain uh, a distance from the coastline or I believe the border. Like 50 kilometers. So, yeah, believe. something along those lines. You have to have uh, a trust to own property. But if, if you are not a Mexican citizen. Exactly, yes, yeah. And so the idea there is, is you just get that trust and you pay for the trust on an annual basis. It's, you know, it's some money, but it's not, not too terrible. And, and, and the, I don't think the price of the trust actually, um, it, it's not connected to the price of the house because mm -hmm. um, we have two different houses of two different values and the trust amount is virtually the same. I mean, they're with different banks, so there may be just a slightly different amount, but it's generally about the same. So um, I may be wrong um, if, if you've had a different experience, but um, that's been ours and it hasn't, and it doesn't really, it hasn't really changed too much. It's not like it was one amount one year and then it all of a sudden jumped yeah. the next year. Once again, that price may go up over time, but it doesn't seem to have the same at this point in time. And, and we've, we've had our properties since uh, in trust since uh, 2018 doesn't seem to have a large jump yeah. um, from there. And on this house, um, um, we uh, Ada was a citizen at that point in time, but we decided to go with the trust anyway, just because I'm not a citizen. And I'm just, it, you know, it's legal documentation um, that is actually, you know, puts things in perspective in your favor, just like a trust would in the United States. And so I uh, don't think them, uh, of them as sort of an evil thing. Think of them as another way to, to drive clarity in, in your ownership. Makes, of, makes of it that. easier if, when you have be beneficiaries and, and such. So, yeah. um, and that was for us, you know, we wanted to make sure that it, that was a smooth process. Uh, Cause anytime you have any foreign mm -hmm. land, uh, you know, and if something happens to us, uh, you know, it's, it's good to know that, you know, it's, things will be smooth for the for the next the next round <laughs> yeah yeah and another thing too um getting back to ada's um being a, a citizen uh if you're a dual citizen yes um you know the u.s will watch out for you as still a u.s citizen but if you're a citizen of the country that you're residing in obviously you have to follow those laws at a, as a citizen. And so there are some, some things there just, just I am to, not an American when I'm here. Yeah. I, I, I exit the US as a US citizen and I enter Mexico as a Mexican citizen. So I no longer, I can't go to the, to the US consulate and ask for help because I am here as a Mexican. So yeah. those are the things um, that you may want to consider. And you can get your, you can qualify for a Mexican citizenship, I believe after five years i don't know you yeah, know what look it up <laughs> i look it up you got to be able there's some language requirements at that point in time and and knowing some history and such kind of similar to to the u.s side of things except for the u.s doesn't really have like so much of a, of a language um requirement on yeah. their side so yeah. and, and of course also too on the, the legal items just to kind of wrap it up you know it's not like the same legal process here if you you know if you fall in a pothole walking down the street where there shouldn't be a pothole you're not going to be able to sue anybody. You know, obviously it's it's less litigious here. Um, yeah, you know, if you from fall in our house, we're not liable. That was yeah. that that it's it's you really can't go. Yeah, and and that, and yeah, I think a lot of people like that because it's a little bit of a laissez-faire. It's like you know you have control over yourself. You have to watch out for yourself because the legal system here is not just going to going to you know have that safety net for you. I, this is in more your your realm as a physical therapist and and uh, aging and wellness. Uh, but the other thing is, you know, your later years, obviously you're looking to retire in Mexico, but what happens when you get in your upper 80s, 90s and, and beyond? Uh, uh, and so those are some things to consider as well. Ada, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, well, we, we have some um, neighbors that are actively sort of in that process. They've been here for over 25 years. And you know they they they've got places you know some had places in other in other areas um, you know in other countries, 
Um, and they're making that decision right now, um, realizing that, you know what, um, the house that they're currently in it has a lot of steps. There's a lot of caretaking for that particular property that was fine for them back when they maybe bought it in the 80s, 90s, or you know, early 2000s. Um, and so, but once again, that if you're somebody who is has maybe planned ahead, um, kind of thinking, you know what, this is this place. I'm I'm going to be one and done, and it's um, you know it's flatter, it's more accessible. Um, you know, wheelchair access is not um, not great. There are absolutely places that do have wheelchair access and smoother um, areas, but you're going to want to go someplace probably like like around here in Puerto Vallarta. Yeah. Um, you're gonna you're gonna probably be a little bit more closer to the tourist areas, but up in um, Marina Vallarta, Nueva Vallarta, and sort of those areas that are more newer um, newer builds, and they'll be more set up for that. Um, if you are staying in town like our you know in Gringo Gulch, uh, yeah, good luck. You know you're you're, you're not. I, I actually have been seeing in the last couple. This trip was the first time I've seen it, and I've seen People two or three. Us. You know the little, like the little carts that are the little, you know, like at Costco and uh -huh. people, get, you know, are kind of driving around. They've got, you know, kind of hardcore versions of those that I've seen kind of going down the street. With, all terrain. With, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like an all terrain um, kind of mobility vehicle with, um, and they're maybe with another person. So, um, so it's not that it's not possible, but it's just a matter of, you know, maybe you need that to get from point A to point B, but you're fine within your house because you have proper railings. We've, I've talked about. You know, we may need to put mm -hmm. railings here, not so much for us at this point in time, but actually for extended family um, that may be in those, you know, kind of upper years or guests that we have that are older than us. And and one last thing, which we haven't really thought about much, but is certainly something to think about is if you are in Mexico and you die, uh, what do you want to have happen? Do you want mm -hmm. your, you know, shipping back to the U.S.? You're going to get cremated, buried here. What are those plans? So. You know, you're, you're kind of thinking ahead funeral arrangements, depending on where you are and, and how much of a planner you are. Um, you may want to just take that into consideration. Um, but we haven't even stepped there. But, yeah, but, but we will, we will, yeah, definitely. We will. This is the last 14th point. I think this is a really important one. Um, when folks come to Mexico, you are going to a foreign country. You are in a host country. They do have their own culture. They do have their own way of, uh, of living, their lifestyle all of that. Now there are some places, there are many places in Mexico you can go and live just like in the United States or Canada or other other countries. Um, but what I would say is as much as you possibly can embrace the culture of Mexico. That's what really is enriching about about living here. Uh, and and uh, by the way, it's also uh, a lot more inexpensive. Uh, there's a lot of things to do. And you know, if you start learning the language, learning the culture, learning what makes people tick and, and making a huge difference, uh, you know, I, that, that I think is a really important part of, of, of being down here. I, 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 did you have any thoughts on that? Or? Yeah, there's, there's obviously things are done differently and there's going to yes. be this desire to want to change it and make it more efficient. Um, and you're going to find that people don't necessarily, you know, this is how they've lived for as long as they've lived and they want to continue that. So, um, yeah, it is, it is tricky because, you know, I like, I'm one of those people that is, is an efficient person. I don't necessarily have a lot of patience sometimes. And boy, you have, I have to learn it, um, you know, to kind of say, you know what? I'm down here and five minutes in Mexico is not five minutes in the U.S. Right. <laughs> so it's, it's, you just have to kind of just mentally recalibrate and, um, and yeah, and just go with it and just know that, you know, you're down here. If you're going to have to wait, it's not a bad place to wait. Well, hopefully this video helped out a little bit, uh, a little bouncing around with some, some topics, uh, these, these major ones that, that came to mind because, you know, it's not as simple as I'm just going to sell everything, move down here, sit on the beach and drink margaritas. Well, and like I yeah. said, we're, we're five years continuing in the process. Yes. Yeah. We're, we're, we're not, like I said, so, so that's, that's, you know, the, I think the more, the, the stress may come sometimes when you are on a timeline. Yeah. Um, and so if you can sort of think about what that timeline looks like, the more you're able to spread out, yeah. um, you know, it, it may reduce some of that. I know that when, when timelines get condensed is when things can get a little bit yeah. brutal. So, yeah. yeah and and if, if you're one year out, if you're five years out, if you're 10 years out, now's the time to start thinking about what you want to do. 
uh, because that it'll make a, a ton of difference in the world and enjoy it, you know, embrace it. You know, that's, that's the fun part of, uh, 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 you know, planning and, and looking forward to something exciting and new. So um, I guess that's it. Uh, yeah. Check out our Facebook group. Obviously we'll have more stuff in there um, and check out our other videos. There's a lot of other content if, if you're a first time reviewer and of course, like subscribe. Uh, since we are also doing a lot of changing uh, ourselves, we'll probably have the videos a little less frequently. We may have one or two coming out, but we we got some TikToks that are kind yes, of yes. We, we we have some old, uh, not old footage, but different <laughs> different footage that uh, kind of bonus footage that will be um, kind of sprinkled in there along the way, um, especially if we're not um, necessarily down here to do a full a full length video. So um, so if you're not on TikTok. Um, you know, it's up to you to join, but we usually do post what we post in TikTok inside the Facebook, Facebook group, group, so yeah. you'll see it there. Yeah, 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 join the Facebook group, that's kind of the primary, and if you want to do the TikTok thing, you can do that as well. But anyway, um, great catching up, everybody. Uh, shoot us a note, Make com please make comments. Um, we really, really enjoy those, uh, uh, and, you know, get the engagement of others um, on this video and in our Facebook group. So thank you so much. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye. All right, I'm with Eddie here at Eddie's Hair Salon, and another question for yeah. the video, and that is, uh, so Eddie, you're from the San Francisco Bay Area, yeah, and then you moved down to Puerto Vallarta. Yes. What was your biggest stressor or thing that was difficult during that process? Wow. Well, we didn't have internet. Ah. We had remember AOL. Yeah. The the. the yep. Yep. Well, oh, man. You're connecting. You yeah, know? that's not an so eight, another story. You had to do the footwork. Yeah. And you had to learn Spanish. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And you had to, you had no to, auto translation? Well, but I mean, to get from no auto, trans, no auto <laughs> translation, and you couldn't go into some pay, Facebook page and go, where's the best place to get tacos after 10 o'clock at 9? True. True. Yes. And answer those stupid questions, because those are stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, because if th back then you had to just get in the street and meander and figure it out, yeah. and there was nobody that was going to clear it up for you, right. there was pe people were always very kind and very helpful. But that was the biggest stressor because then, really? but at the same time, it forced you out of your comfort zone right. and made you interact with, with locals. That's true. That's true. That you know, was a, it, it was challenging, yeah. but. I look back and it was the best thing for me. Yeah, yeah, no. Because I, you know, you if you have that that that, that kind of cushion, mm -hmm. you go, I'm gonna, I don't want to go and talk to them. I'm too embarrassed. Uh, yeah. They're busy. I don't feel confident. My Spanish isn't very good. They're not gonna understand me. So you'll, you know, you don't go. But if you have that cushion, you go, I'm obsessed this person. Yeah, but it made you get it. That was the biggest one, and I guess the any other one, that was it. Now, how, how about how about how about leaving though? Anything from leaving? Or are you saying I'm out of here? I'm done. All good. Yeah, no, I mean you know, there's I guess honestly, I guess shopping and good Thai food. <laughs> that's, so that's, that's good. That's good. That was good. But then you know, fast forward, we then we were able to get Amazon here, uh -huh. and, and then you know, so then you started to feel like. Well, there's, there's, we still have access. Yeah, yeah. That's you know, you know, you know what, what's interesting for me. I, I think you brought up two points, right? Uh, the, the, the first is uh, Facebook, because if, if, for, if folks here, if, if you don't know, uh, the, the web, most of the places don't have websites, but they have a Facebook page because it's right. easy, right? right? So you can find anything pretty much via Facebook and any, any small business. Correct. Uh, then the other thing, and, and I think this may drive it a little bit, is that you know when I go out to eat or do some things, I find myself. Uh, and I'm trying to go against this more now, I find myself sitting down, it's like all these people that I'm sitting around eating, which I thought was kind of a different place, all kind of look like me. And, and I, I gotta get out of that, right? Yeah. Gotta totally get out of that. You know, I think that that's the, I, I, the it has helped me live here and feel like I belong here. Yeah, to, to get I don't feel like it. an outsider. I yeah. don't feel like I'm a tourist. And, you know, and I would take the bus. We didn't have Ubers. And yeah. if you don't want to pay the taxi or you were on a budget, and FYI, the peso was exactly, when I moved here today, what it is today, it was when I oh, moved here. Oh, so funny. So I did, you know, you go, okay, you take the bus, and hopefully they would understand you. If not, you got on the bus, and wherever it let you off, you weren't gonna, it wasn't the end of the world. Yeah, yeah. And I think that I did, now, I think age has a lot to do with it. Yeah. Because when you're younger, 
you kind of can go with the flow easier, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, that's true. And when you get older, we sometimes want things to be how we think it should be. True. And more, with internet, sometimes there's more of that expectation. But you couldn't get online and go, okay, here's a good one. Where can I go to get a good teeth cleaning? Right. You had to ask your, to go. your circle of people that you know, and hopefully they knew, or you had to go and do the footwork and get to that place and hope that they were open and say hi, you know, and figure it out. I'm proud that I did that yeah. it that way because it took me out of my comfort zone. It made me learn Spanish, uh -huh. and the people that I met then, I'm still in contact with. So I feel very lucky. That and and we should need to get out of that zone. We should still totally do that now. Even. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah, I mean, I don't understand yeah. some of the. I understand internet. Don't get me wrong. I use yeah, it. Yeah. I need it for my life. I do. I love it, but. The questions sometimes I think are like, you're probably asking that question from a beach chair, right. or a margarita. No, <laughs> maybe I'm jealous. Maybe yeah, jealous. yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's not yeah. true. <laughs> well, well, that's cool. Thanks, Eddie. And do, by the way, go check out Eddie. Eddie's, was it Hair Salon? Yes, Eddie's Hair Salon. On Facebook. Yes. Facebook. And he will message you back with an appointment. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank right. you. Thank you.